tree. <gasps> no, I'm joking. Look what managed to be on the road waiting for us. <gasps> How exciting is this? We were so excited that uh, I think I nearly stole the car. Hello. So yes, indeed, when we last had their tracks and they cut east through the block and then they've pretty much taken a break. Hello, boy. I am so happy to see lions today. I was really hoping that we could see them and I'm even extra happier right now because it means that we can spend some time with them even if the drive has to end up slightly earlier today. Isn't it fantastic? I am so happy nature worked in our favor. Right, I'm not too sure which boy this is, so please, um, if you guys want to help me out getting to know the Birmingham boys a bit better and know who's who, please do let me know and use the hashtag Safari Live. Um, I know we saw Nsuku the other day, but I don't know if this is the same one, because he's got quite a big gash on the other side of his cheek. He recently turned and we could see it a bit better, um, but uh, not anymore. What, are you going to go back to sleep? <laughs> So we've got one boy, two females that are here, and there's a third one that I can just barely make out the ears of. So I'm going to try moving slightly forward, see if perhaps we can see the other girl who is... Oh, she's moving. Hang on, guys. I just want to... She's just around the corner, so she's just gotten up, and I just want to see what's happening. Let's just go like this, so maybe we can see some of them moving around. Yep. How are we gonna go all together for a stroll? Seems like we are. So, what time are lions more active during the day, during the night? Well, it's still quite chilly. It's during the daylight, so I reckon maybe they've seen something, because when we got here they were quite sleepy and then I think they heard something in the distance that they were quite interested in so I think uh, maybe they've just gone off exploring see what what else it is that they are interested in I think maybe the two girls are up to something but um, is this third one gonna go I think the girls are a bit more preoccupied with what's happening and he seems to be just enjoying life Tenza and Adele think it's in Fumo um, okay I will take your word for it bless you in Fumo I think Tinio there's another theory. Leslie believes it's Tinio. I think he's got a very big gash underneath his right eye. Maybe it'll be easier. Yes, if you look at us directly, it'll be slightly easier to figure out who you are. But look at all those scars. I'm sure these guys have fought way too many battles and then they wear all those scars brightly in the, on their face. Isn't that amazing? I think, you know, as humans, we pay so much money for our face not to show our age and the lions, they wear it quite proudly. It's a sign of power of that they've managed to survive and dominate in an area. I think there's definitely something there that he enjoys the smell of. Perhaps that's one of the where one of the females was lying on earlier on. Are you going to do a grimace? Wonderful. Look at that. That was a bit of a lazy one. I even thought that he wanted to... Ah, <laughs> oh, look at those teeth up broken left canine if that helps anyone with the ID to get a definitive ID on him and what he was doing now it's called the Fleming grimace so he wasn't being aggressive to us in any manner he was just picking up all of the pheromones and the scents on the ground and probably just still fluttering around in the air and trying to decipher what it is that that message or factory message has. So it could be that one of the females um, urinated there earlier on. It could be that um, there was some lion scent lingering. He's busy scent marking now. Or it could be that maybe one of the females is coming into Estrus. It's a range of possibilities. So when he does that, it's just exactly to try and find out what's happening and and who's going around. We've got a very brave little family of Franklins coming to join the party. I don't I don't really know if this is family suicide or if they just <laughs> what they're doing. 
All right, we've got confirmation that it is in Fuma with the girls around here. And look how close those Franklin are. What are you guys doing? <laughs> I don't think the lions are particularly going to go for the for the Franklin. They're too small, but you never know. I think they would be slightly smarter than that and to try their luck at hiding in the bushes just behind the lion. Ah, yeah. Run. I think she's not too bothered. Jenny, you're wondering if the girls that we're looking at are part of the Yankahuma Pride? Um, there's a very good chance that they are. There are three of them here, but I haven't been able to actually have a look at them properly because we've just been looking at them from behind and the bush is quite thick around us to to try and get a visual from another area. So I'm just going to wait for this last girl to start moving and then maybe we'll be able to reposition because I think the other two females have gone further up or maybe what I think what they might actually be doing is just lying in the sun to try and warm up a little bit. Because I think that's what he's done, and if I'm not mistaken, the la or the last time I saw the females a few moments ago, they seemed to be just in basking in the sun. So they also get quite cold. Thankfully, it's not just us, the humans. And um, they seem to... Huh, are you going? Let's see where you go off to. Cody, you're wondering why the male lion has got thick fur along his neck. So there are a couple of theories about it, that thick fur is called a mane. And a lot of people believe that it's to protect the face of the male lion for when they fight from the neck, the ears, the eyes, when they fight with other lions. And some people also believe that it's a good way of, for females to see in the distance if it's another male or a female that's coming around. So maybe we can have another pretty look around here. I'm gonna leave the male for the time being and just see what the females have been up to. Oh my goodness, fourth female, hello. <gasps> and the cubs. Yay. What a great morning. <laughs> All right, I think I wanna try and park. Giving them enough space. We've got here three older cubs and one, two, three, four females and a male. So I would assume, yes, this is the Ankahuma pride. I think maybe we were missing one female. Oh, aren't you all looking stunning in the sunlight? Good morning. Wonder if they've been walking quite a bit during the night and that's why they've been so tired. Funny enough, no, we didn't hear them roaring last night, or at least I didn't, and I don't think Taylor did either, because we normally, you know, when we wake up in the morning, part of the routine is like, oh, you know, did you hear anything? Did you hear leopard, lion, hyena? And I think everyone was quite quiet, so maybe they were just busy on the move. Oh, Chantel and Alice in FC said that they heard them. Girls, why didn't you tell us before? <gasps> There's another lion. But I can't see from here. Did you guys hear that growling? Hmm. All right. Um, guys, I think we're going to have to be patient and see who else was around there. Probably, uh, ah, there we go. There's a cub coming around the corner. Hello. Oh, they're looking so healthy. Just stunning. Look at all those tiny spots on his legs. Hello. Ah, and you were being reprimanded by your mom, hey? So we've got one, two, three, four, five lionesses, one male, and I can count four cubs from here. I think there are somewhere around the corner, but it's a bit of a tight space, so I don't really want to drive around there, and they've been so nice and friendly and just coming to us. So we're just going to let them carry on doing that. Ah. Oh. 
Cody, you're wondering if lions ever get scared of the vehicles. Um, yes, um, if you drive too close to them, they don't like it. So you've always got to leave a, a bit of a, um, uh, a space for them just to feel comfortable. Because, I mean, imagine if you had a truck or any car driving way too close to you. You wouldn't like it either. So we try to give them space because we want them to, to think of the vehicles as something, as something harmless, something that's not going to, to hurt them in any way. What are you looking at, girl? Are you perhaps Amber Eyes? Jess, you'd like to know at what age does a male cub start growing its mane? So when they're about maybe seven to eight months old, you'll start seeing some fluff underneath their underneath their chin uh, their chins and it'll start growing from there but they won't get a full beautiful male mane like the males do until they're maybe about five years old or so so they'll have smaller males uh, so, uh, sorry smaller manes and they become quite obvious it's almost like you know when when young humans are starting to get their beard and they don't shave they kind of look like that for until they're about two and then it's also believed that once they become territorial or they've got a lot or they've got a pride of their own then their mane grows quite quicker hello girl i wonder do we have more cubs around there or are you looking at a potential prey we've got what's happening we've got another female that's following behind Uh, yeah, Tux, you're welcome to make your way. I'm not far from Pangolin Track, Twin Dams Junction. Uh, it's a whole schlambi here. I think there's a cub that's not too happy and seems that it's a bit grumpy in the front. We'll wait for these two guys to move around. The rest of the pride doesn't seem to be too bothered. I think maybe someone's being naughty and it's being reprimanded. see what's happening around there. I wonder if this little guys, if we drive very close to the one side of the road, if they'll let us go and have a look, because I'm busy puzzling as to what they're doing. And I can't really see anything from here. It's very, very thick bush around here. Sorry boys, I'm going to try to drive as far as possible from you. Maybe not. Are you going to let me through without getting scared? All right. Oh, sorry. There we go. Gone back to sleep. Very pretty things. What's happening here? <gasps> Look at that tiny, small little cub. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my god. That is a tiny, tiny, tiny lion. And look how fierce it is. It's not letting the rest of the pride bully it. And I wonder if this is what Amber Eyes has been hiding all this time.
Oh, uh, I think my heart just melted. I can't believe this. This is one of the tiniest lions I have ever seen. This cannot be more older than a few weeks old. My goodness. Let me just call Texan and just let him know. Okay, copy. Also, there's a very, very, very small one to one here. Brand new. I think the Ankahumas, because there's five females around here and six older cubs. Uh, well, seven now. I think A from um, I think it's just maybe a couple of weeks. It's not older than that. It's still very very small. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Your belly is too big for you, and all those tiny little spots. This is too precious. This is... Wow. I'm sure we're just seeing them as she started introducing this new member of the pride to the older, um, the older cubs. And I can't believe the amount of noise coming from such a little thing. Oh, are you tired? Too much fighting. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> oh, you see there's... There is n no aggression between these cubs whatsoever. It's just unfortunately the bigger one is a bit rougher because I mean he's a lion so he's very strong but they're just playing around and this little one is just I think loving the fact that he can have more playmates now. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Our Laura Muller, you're wondering if this tiny little one is at risk with the other ones. Well, there's always a bit of a risk because they don't probably know how to play um, with such a small creature. But I mean, look at it, it's so pretty. But um, no, they, they're all part of the same pride. And I believe maybe what we're looking at is actually a very special moment in the life of these lions. One that I thought that I would never ever in my life see. And it's when the tiny Brandis new cub uh, of one of the... Lionesses gets introduced to the rest of the pride so or you know maybe they've already known it for a little while I don't think she could have gone too far I mean look how small it is but they won't hurt them they won't do anything to it because it, it belongs or it's part of the same pride if it were a cub from a different pride and a pride that's you know not related to it altogether if it were to find a male that's didn't is not the father of this one then yes it would be at very high risk because very likely a stranger male will come and kill the younger cub but even the older ones would be at risk i think now what we're looking is everyone just learning how to play with each other look at that size difference <laughs> robert you're wondering if all the females take care of the cubs um yes well obviously this one will have its mother that will look after it more than the other ones but um, one of the reasons why cats, uh, why lions are sociable cats, or one of the only ones, is just to be able to protect each other. So they will protect the other pride members. And what is quite special about lions is that they will also allow cubs that are not their own to suckle. Um, suckle from a different mother, that's what I meant. So they will pretty much help each other to raising the cubs. I mean, can you imagine all this energy? Look at this naughty boy. Well, luckily he's not playing that rough with that tiny little ball of fluff, which seems to be tired, but now it's playtime. And with his golden light, wow, what an incredible morning.
Oh, we've got the rest of the pride walking next to us. Hello everyone. How are you guys doing? Oh, you seem to have a bit... I think you've been mating. You've got blood on your neck and a bloody eye. Hmm. Oh my god, guys. I think this is one of the most special lion sightings I have ever had. Look at all of them around there. And the tiny one and the rest of the pride is coming next to us. So we're not going to move. We're going to sit and stand quite still and see where they go. You see, we've got the, I, probably the mother smelling them and she's going to, are you going to carry him? Oh, she's going to pick it up. Are you going to pick it up? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think this is a feisty little cub. Look at that. Giving everyone trouble. Oh. Well, we know who's the mother now and she's trying to grab it by the scruff, probably to carry it around. Oh my god, I hope you're getting a million screenshots of this. <gasps> she's not hurting it. She just has to carry it because it's still a bit too small. Oh my god! Wow. What a special moment. And there she goes with her, with her little cub in her mouth. I'm hoping they'll carry on walking on their own, but we will definitely carry on following them around to see where, where else they go. My god, and you were wondering if, you know, if the cub was at risk. So while it was busy playing with the older cub, the female was here and she was, you know, just she she was in a pose, almost like a stalking pose, just to make sure that if anything happened or if she felt that her cub was threatened, that she could always pounce and just protect its little offspring. So I think that was also proof enough that she was fine. I would like to know who it is that's the mother of this particular cub because she's just got one so I wonder if maybe it's her first time at having a cub you know all these possibilities jumping into my head but this is my god this is wonderful and she still <laughs> has it on his mouth <laughs> there we go just gonna stay here pretty much away from all of them look at that and it's funny how things work I've always said that I the one thing that I really wanted to see was just a leopard or a lion carrying their baby in their mouth and I don't think I can be more lucky this morning oh wow this has just been incredible hello all of you Beautiful golden light. Now you guys are the older ones. You're not the cubbies cubbies anymore. <laughs> oh, look at that gorgeous light. From such a young age. They look so regal, don't they? Let's see. I just want to try going forward. Uh, John, the cub is still in the mouth. Look at that. She's still carrying it around. It's still too small to keep up by itself. So she's just going to carry it around until they decide to find a spot for the day. Um, you know, a step of this poor cub, or about maybe 10-15 steps of this tiny little creature that we're looking at, is maybe one of these ones over here. So, oh my goodness. I wonder if there's something else that they're looking at? Hello? 
obviously the, this little one is still quite brand new because she doesn't seem to know what she wants to do with it and I don't think they've decided where they want to go just yet. I think maybe there's something into the bushes that they'd like to go into. Perhaps there's something that they're not too confident about. Oh look, we've got somebody that also found something to carry around in its mouth. Do you want to be, <laughs> do you want to be big already and carry your own cubs? <laughs> Let me try moving again, going a bit more of an angle. Violet, you'd like to know how a mom transports multiple cubs. Well, they have to do multiple trips, because they can only carry one at a time. So... I want to know in which direction they're going to be going before we carry on moving because I think the cubs are full of energy. So a lot of the times um, if they, if there's a few of them maybe it'll take a bit longer for them to be introduced to the rest of the pride because they'll have to kind of start keeping up with them and it's not easy. You can imagine sometimes lions cover great distances during the night so the ones that we're looking at are quite old and uh, they go with the pride when they when whenever they go anywhere and i think they've started to observe the hunts now as well which is a crucial part of the, you know their training into becoming adult lions <laughs> are you going to carry on carrying the stick Jesse from Texas, you're wondering if you, this is the only tiny cub that there is, if it's normal for lions to have only one cub. Um, yes, they can have anything between one to four, and that is normally just the amount of cubs that they have at a time. So it is, if, if this is the only one that there is, then it would be perfectly normal for her to have just one. So I thought maybe the other ones were coming from behind us. Um, but I think maybe she's got a place, a very safe place, possibly something like a den around here that's where she's going to keep it in. But now that this cub has met the rest of the family, then likely um, they're going to be start. They're going to start spending a lot more time together, and it'll become just one more of you know the naughty bunch that we've got here. Hello, beautiful girl. I wonder if this is where you've been hiding all along. a tiny one. Rebecca, you're wondering if they introduce them one by one or all of them at the same time. Um, normally it doesn't, as far as I know, and not that I have too much experience witnessing it on my own, but they, oh, so pretty, but they normally just uh, introduce them all together. Oh my god, that is such a small thing. And you see, everyone's quite curious about the little one. They all keep coming around and seeing it, and the mother is still a bit worried, like, you know, like you can see, but don't play too much. But everyone's quite eager to meet the little addition to the family. Oh, there it walks. Hello. Are you still stumbling on your feet? <laughs> yeah. You don't play rough with the younger ones. Oh. Look at that! Isn't that the best portrait ever? Oh my god. You, like, this is so unbelievably special. What an incredible opportunity this wonderful lions are giving us this morning. I, I really, I think I'm at a, at a loss for words. Tiny regal creature. Incredible to think that something so small is going to become something so big, isn't it? Oh, pretty little thing. You can see all the spots on his forehead, so I would say that this thing is probably just a month and a half, two months old. It's normally the time that they start meeting the rest of the family.
Why is everyone else going? Because this is the first time that we're seeing this tiny cup, I don't want to be too close to it. I don't want to bother it. I also want to give it enough time to, to learn that we just love watching them from a distance, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so I think this is far enough for the comfort zone for this little cub. Just trying to be sensitive to what we're what we're seeing and just make sure that we don't stress them out in any possible way. Well, I think he's too busy now trying to fight <laughs> all these older cubs that are t starting to bully it. But look, he's putting up a very good... Or, well, she, I'm not too sure what it is. It's putting up a very good fight. Oh, I think we might have a girl. Although it's probably still too early to tell. <laughs> or maybe not. Hello, little one. Jess, you'd like to know what percentage of lion cubs survives into adulthood, when in this particular area they've got uh, about a 70% chance, roughly. Between 60 and 80, I would say, all around this area, depending where you are in particular conditions, and of course, what book you read. <laughs> but they've got a, a good... Uh, a decent success rate around here. In some other areas where it's tougher to find food, it might be a lot harder for them. And, well, it just depends on many things. I think this particular ones have a, a good <laughs> have a good fighting chance because they are part of a bigger pride. Lots of eyes looking after them. And, well, we know that these females have made a stunning job. I mean, look how healthy the other cubs are doing. So I think this cub was probably lucky and born into a pride that it's going to try their utmost best to make sure that it manages to get into adulthood. Sometimes, unfortunately, bad things happen in the bush. Random things will, you know, one of a buffalo or elephants will find them or maybe other lions or, you know, genetic diseases or any other thing. But, but I think it's safe to say that this pretty one is very feisty. Very, very feisty and he's going to try its best. It's so funny because these cubs don't really know what to do with this. They keep touching it and be like, well, but it fights back. <laughs> but you see, even for a lion and even if he's a very strong cub, he's still being, or oh, it's still being very gentle with the youngster. Wow, oh, you see the youngster is fighting back. You see? No clothes are coming out. Just more curiosity than anything. Just trying to figure out like, will it break? Can I play with it? Looking at. <laughs> I think this <laughs> rolling around, hey? If you ever were wondering how the cubs get some of their scars, and I think we've put that mystery to an end. Oh, tiny little teeth. They're so fierce. Oh, we're on the road. Home by yourself. Where's your mom? Don't worry guys, the mom is just in the bushes not too far from where we are, so I'm sure she's watching everything very closely. But I think maybe she just wanted a bit of a break. <laughs> so I'm sure she's gonna come back and fetch it if the pride does decide to, to move around. She wouldn't just leave it in the middle of the road. As, as you can imagine, not the safest place. <gasps> he, it also knows where mom is. I can't even walk yet.
Kirsten, you say it looks like a rough start to life. Um, maybe. Lions' lives are very tough and rough. So, I think it's probably good to start trading and getting used to things very early on in life. Let's just, let's just hear him calling for mom. Hear the females answering. We were just busy doing slow contact calls or very low contact calls. So I'm sure I can't see them from here because unfortunately the bush is a bit thick. But I'm sure this little one is going straight onto where the camera is. I think my heart is going to burst. Let's just go slightly forward and see if maybe we can we can see them again. I don't think they've gone far just hard to see them here with such a uh, long grass right guys we're going to try and find them again I think that they've moved slightly into the thickets over here so while we try to find them again let's go over to Taylor and see how her lion cat is going lion cat lion search <laughs> <laughs> 